Hello, everybody, and welcome once again to your new favorite Wednesday activity, Written Wednesday. And already my seat is deflating. I am sad. So, we get started a little bit early today, or, frankly, right on time for once. We must have entered a time paradox. So, I'm going to get started with writing, and as people file in, I'm going to start uh, addressing a few topics I want to do today. I'm going to be trying to help out Meg, a little bit, a friend of mine, who is a good writer, but hard on herself. And I feel like that is going to be a very relatable topic to a lot of people joining in for these streams however you you find me be it youtube or picardo oh and there's a cesra hi cesra but i've noticed a lot in myself and other people that either the idea comes to you in such a a broad stroke of an idea that it's very difficult to get from one scene to the next or stitch the idea together or focus on the small individual elements of the story or you have an idea for those small individual elements and the big overarching picture, but you become so hard on yourself that you can't convince yourself to write out of fear that it's not the way you want it to be or it's not coming out of your mouth onto the screen the way you want it to. So in either case, we're left in a situation where no writing is happening and ambition is waning. And to an extent that does the exact opposite of, of, of what you're trying to achieve. One of the primary things, be it in art, writing, whatever you're doing, is you want to hit that flow state. You want to hit that point of, I'm in the zone. Nobody can touch me. I am in my little, my little creativity space here, and magic is happening. And the way we develop good habits is by training your neurons. The more you do something, the more of a connection is formed there. The more that gets ingrained into you, the more you train those neurons to act like that. So when you do finally decide enough is enough and you're going to fix things, you've created such an oppressive structure that you just can't break out of it. Or breaking out of it is such an insurmountable task that you don't want to write or draw anymore. Yeah, weight lift the neurons. Be tough like Sush. Tip, tip, tips around and finds a place to sit. So we just have doop 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 doop. <laughs> Sush comes over and just sits down. The, or not Sush, excuse me. Sestra just comes right over and sits down. At some point I need to get puppets of like everybody in the stream who is just a regular here and just like have them walk in accordingly like, oh hey, a stream's going on. Nice to see you guys. But yeah, I'm going to wait for a few people to want to come in to address how I get over those tack or those issues. And I don't all, all the time. A lot of the time, as we see by how little progress gets done in the week, I fall into the same traps. And it's only through these little exercises, oh, hey, Meg, where I sort of learn or, learn or teach myself to break out of that habit I'm in and slowly try to translate it into better writing habits or better creative habits in the future. For anyone following me on DeviantArt or, or my Fur Affinity, you, you'll you see that I've been experimenting with trying to get decent at a digital art tablet, and that's just been a lot of experimenting trying to design like far future Starfleet uniforms that Sush doesn't like. So. Let's start this stream trying to be helpful for once, instead of just me trying my absolute darndest. I will never follow you on for, for affinity, Caleb, force me. I, you're not missing anything. I, I just post exactly the same thing between my Twitter, my for affinity, and DeviantArt. It's, ju it's just the same picture. Except, I will usually drop cuss words on my DeviantArt because it's older than my FA or Twitter, because I don't like swearing, and I guess... It's our already sort of an established thing that I do cuss sometimes on DeviantArt. Oh, this chair is sinking fast. I hate it. I hate it. Oh, oh, Lord. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I've got my big old coffee cup full of Coca-Cola Zero. Let's, get, let's see if we can a answer, excuse me, a few questions and get some writing done. I know, this chair. I absolutely hate this chair. The day I can replace it 
is the day I will celebrate on like the roof of my house with two Roman candles and just head to toe glitter. Get him a box or something. Yeah, just an egg crate with a pillow would be more reliable at this point. And in the meantime, I did actually manage to get some writing done. A little bit of inspiration hit. I think we were somewhere... Ah, uh, yeah, somewhere up around this area, right about here in the last stream, and I almost got an entire page done. How uncharacteristic of me. Now, unlike the last stream, hopefully this one's signal won't die and just go straight out the window. Don't ask me why I'm wearing the headphones, it's just a force of habit, I'm on my computer. Headphones. Excuse me. Now I'm paranoid and I have to make sure I'm filming. Yep, we're good. Now, Meg, I would like you for the intents and purposes of this uh, video to phrase your questions to me uh, like we were talking about on DeviantArt. So hopefully we can go through and address them one by one and see if we can't sort of collaborate and help each other out. Because I don't consider myself the greatest of authors. I'm decent at it. I'd like to think I have some good ideas and I've helped a couple of my friends out and I'd like to hope that together with everybody we can kind of bounce off of one another and just sort of hype ourselves up and just build up and build up and build up into where we want to be with our writing. And again, I'll say it again, Meg is a very good writer. She just doesn't write a lot because I think she's a little bit overly hard on herself. And she is. She's very good at it. I remember she shared me the intro to a magical book she was doing that took place in a school in this big old castle and I, I'm not doing the setting justice by simplifying it so badly but I liked how she had it framed and I liked the opening and the beginning of it. Okay, You are legally obligated to collab with me and me only. Well until the court ruling goes through I still technically have some leeway there Sush. Is Meg J.K. Rowling? No, she's actually talented. Meg, I mean. So, my big goal for today is to get to the end of this page, which is, I know, a very, very daunting task, and uh, maybe if I can get to the next page, and like I've been saying for the past couple of stream, or streams, maybe get to the main characters of the book. Caleb, I'm going to send you two sounds. I'd love it if you played them both on stream. What is it like this? Oh, God, my sister played one for me the other day where it's just like a it's a it's a picture of uh, Sully from Monsters, Inc. And his eyes are all bugged out and it's just a red filter over the image. And it's like a two second clip of him just going. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why the Internet does anything. I certainly don't know why it did that, but I'm happy to have had that experience in my life. Okay, lol, main characters are... Sh sh oh, main characters, schmerichters. For a second there, I was looking at schmerichters, and I'm just like... Oh, there's a word I don't know. Meg's turning it around on me. She's she's getting her revenge for all the time I've had her read my stuff and there's been these gargantuan Cthulian eldritch words I've slipped into the narration like they're words people use. I have a very distinct vocabulary. <laughs> and now, now it's Meg's turn. Okay, Sush sent the first thing. I am very concerned. Let's hear what it is. Be tough like Sue. Oh. You made a file. Oh, excuse me. Alright, guys. Let me know if you can hear this over the, uh, over the stream. I don't know if Discord's going to censor its own audio. I don't think it should. So, here we go. Oh. Alright, here we go. Be tough like Sush. Yeah, weight lift the neurons. Be tough like Sush. <laughs> I'm disappointed in that first one. I'm going to say that straight off. 
because I feel like it's it, it's missing something. We need be tough like Sush, exercise your neurons, and then just cut to a clip of like Godzilla screaming. I think that would be the perfect audio clip. All right, what's the second one? Ghostcaleb.oog. Yeah, weightlift the neurons. Be tough like Sush. Okay, apparently Sush is some sort of Kryptonian prisoner of war that's stuck in the Shadow Realm and attempting to contact us using my voice. That is scary. Sush, I'm going to pray tonight. But yeah, Meg, whenever you're ready, if you'd like, just put them forward and I will attempt to address each question one by one. And I have a few tips and tricks that I'm bringing back from my my older days when I used to write a lot more, and I'm going to go into those a little bit more when we get into a body of a discussion about uh, writing. Fun fact, I'm pretty sure that's the exact effect World of Warcraft uses for their ghosts. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. World of Warcraft, to me, I love their trailers, I love their box art, but to actually look at the game itself, it looks like an adult daycare. The style just does not match up with the gritty, tough, you know, trailer thing they got going on. and it's, it's jarring. Okay. Okay, so I could not find the question I originally asked, sadly. <laughs> Oof. It's fine. Ooh, I should actually be able to do that. Here, let me. Boo -boo 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 -boo. Open DeviantArt, I'm sure nobody would mind. <laughs> Just let everybody see all of my, my interpersonal contacts. Oh, hello, people. Hello, private conversations. <laughs> what do you mean, private conversations? This is a juice stream. Okay, just. Grab that link. And. And just throw that off to just to uh, to make there. Oh, excuse me, it's gonna be nothing. I shouldn't have had horseradish before the stream, and it was especially stupid because I had horseradish and Dijon mustard after burning my mouth on um, caramelization from a pan that I tried to scrape out after cooking some chicken, and I had this molten fork of pain. It's just like, oh, that looks pretty good, and it had a napalm effect on the roof of my mouth. Okay, so the thing I'm having trouble with is my story got to a point that was many details, and I like the big picture of the story, so I'm stuck since I want to not write the small things. <laughs> Harsh rad radishes. Yes, Meg, the harshest of horseradishes. X, a scene or colors, but I don't want to write dialogue. All right. Well, one thing that's always help, helped me, and this is going to be a kind of like dorky advice, but I found what helped me with dialogue is hang out with your friends and just scrutinize the way they talk to one another. Be that in person or on like online. I used to play a lot of Xbox 360, and I was doing a lot of Xbox Live, and I had a never-ending culture sample of of people to want to try and study and secondly if you have any good role-playing friends ro try and role play the scene out with them get a feel for characters talking in that scene use what you've written as the setting and then use your characters to connect with friends and let them explore the universe because allowing someone else in like with what i do with my streams allows a fresh new perspective to be levied on your work and through their exploration it might get you to think about things about the universe that you weren't focusing on at first because the focus the scrutiny then becomes the the characters and how you're interacting with these people sadly i only have one i only have guy friends online so the conversation is limited to no you and your mom jokes. <laughs> ah. So basically, you're stuck talking to Muscle Man from regular show. 
We play. We do play D and D sometimes, but I'm not sure they'd be willing to tr to try a setting I wrote. I'm sure if you talk to them about it, at least some of them would be. And like, not all of them would be like, you know, who else likes writing stories? My mom. Okay, all my. Sush, what kind of life do you live? Or if possible, uh, look to your to your shows, shows that you enjoy, because writing in any case sort of puts forward a unique perspective of the world completely original unto yourself because it's the things you focus on. It's based on the things you like. Every book you read, every movie or TV series you watch, you attached to it and like something about it and there's one or two or three outstanding things that really stand out to you that you focus on that you grab onto that not everybody does so i'd recommend if you're having a hard time with this book try and write some short stories try and role play with some friends try and do something different just to find where your focus is and then take that focus and use it to your advantage when you're writing later find what it is that's important to you and if it is a big scene with a lot of dialogue maybe you want to skip through the scene very quickly maybe you want to lightly mention a conversation they had instead of actually detailing it out maybe you want to introduce a new character to have this conversation with a visitor or something else you want to find what matters to you and that should help at least get the wheels rolling to want to find ways to want to knit together these small scenes that you don't know how to tie into the bigger story and i think another thing is to help with how overly critical you can be sometimes and this is the royal i'm not i'm not singling out make specifically here but a good exercise to want to get over that feeling of hesitation is to challenge yourself. Write a, a three-page story. Write a five-page story. And during the whole initial writing of it, don't hit the backspace button once. Even if you think you goofed, even if you made a spelling error and it's completely obvious, don't hit the backspace even once. Just keep going forward until you get to the end of it. Eventually you'll hit a stride and then you can go back and edit it, but then you'll have something to go back and edit. Because even if you don't like it, now you've got something. You've got something to springboard off of. It's all about finding what you focus on, what you like, and what you want to bring attention to. Because what is important to you, again, and what you focus on will fundamentally shape the story you're trying to tell, the narration you give, your voice as a content creator. It's like drawing. What features do you like about other people's art? What, what's always stood out to you in a good picture? What's one thing you want to learn? And working with that. And then taking periods to isolate yourself from other sources so you're not... Like, I went through a period where, like, I didn't think I could draw anything without a reference. Because, like, oh, I'd kind of like to do this, like this, like this. And I got to a point where it would just strangle and suffocate out the originality from my drawing, and I'd hate the drawing. And then there was, oh, I forget how long ago it was, but my net had went out for like a period of a week. And I only had like very basic references saved to my computer for pose and stuff like that. And eventually I just didn't turn on my computer at all. And I just took some paper and I started drawing from memory. And it was at that moment my art spoke. It was at that moment I, my heart was on the paper, it, my, my focus my idea, my creativity. It was no longer bound by an overcritical sense of, well, look how much better this person's doing this thing that I'm trying to do. Because they're getting to that end by seeing details and other things they like or having different focuses themselves taking them there. So it's okay to like something, but to try and follow behind someone and get to exactly where they're going is only going to 
teach you to tell your creative or your creative side to shut up. Shut up and focus on the reference. Shut up and recreate this thing I'm looking at. So, again, like all things, I believe there is everything in moderation, including moderation. There's a time for references, and there's a time for without them. And if you're hitting a wall, if you're hitting a barrier, and you can't seem to just break through and express what you're wanting on paper, stop looking at that reference. Stop going to videos for help. Tell yourself to shut up. Tell, tell the part of you saying, we need a reference, this isn't good enough, shut up. Turn off your, your Wi-Fi, turn off your chats, just sit down and write. It doesn't even have to be about what you're writing right now. Just take the chance to experiment and find where your voice is. Okay, I stopped sleeping for two days and then my art spoke. Okay, let me fuse real quick. Okay, that's my failed fusion. <laughs> Soup Shimaru, Sloppy Maru. Oh no. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, while Meg and Sush fuse, I'm going to uh, try and reel this back and, and focus here. And I'm going to take what I just said here and, and sort of caveat it into something, a habit I had developed. Okay. Well, thanks for the input. I'm going to just keep writing and hope it works. I'll have to try some new techniques. And yeah, just come up with a story. Just something random. What if there was a bear who was hibernating and he didn't have enough food for the, the, the winter and he decides to break into a, an RV to take some of the snacks out of out of the lounge for a construction crew or something like that. Just, just a little disposable story to see where your voice takes interest, what it wants to focus on. Caleb, you should tell Meg about my new secret technique. I wouldn't even... Oh, yeah, no, it's speaking in Japanese and telling me what to say and getting me to agree to things that I don't know what I'm agreeing to. <laughs> but um, something I used to do, I had acknowledged when I was younger, I have a very cinematic way of writing my books. When I write them, I don't... I don't just imagine a scene in progress. I don't imagine just the words on the paper. I imagine like a moving camera, like I'm just sitting and I'm watching TV and I'm trying to say what's going on in the brain TV on the paper. So the more cinematic I can make my book, the more... Ow. Excuse me. The more cinema... Oh, horse! Oh, God! That was a mistake on, on multiple levels. Ah. Ooh, give me a minute. <sighs> oh, that's true. I, I feel like I went on a spiritual journey there. But the more I can do to make my readers, like, see what's going on, despite, sh or despite not having pictures, the more I can make it so that they can see the scene going on with how I describe it, the better. The more I can make it a cinematic experience, the better. So something I'll do is I have like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of MS Paint uh, documents saved to my computer. Yeah, an out-of-body horseradish experience. But I'll, I'll have all these images saved to my computer of like bits and pieces I like and ideas that I like. Or just I'll scribble something down real quick and it's like, do something like this later. Or this, but like this. And something I did a lot is I, I, I take and I, I draw down like uh, what the aliens of, of my universe would look like. Like here's the Rolfians. That's in the screen, I hope. Or, you know, uh, other stuff like that. The more I have it there to visually look at and see, the more it's something that I can look at and then tangibly explain... Like, I have a bunch of aliens here, too, or, or little robots here. It's just little scribble-down things that help me more clearly visualize what I'm writing. And once it's more clear to me, 
I, I can kind of write it better. So I'd take and I'd, I'd draw up entire maps for old Halo fan fictions I'd write, or I'd have stacks upon stacks of spaceships and and aliens and, and guns and stuff like that for something else I was writing. So the more I could make it less just me pulling words out of the ether to describe kind of a halfway formulated idea I had in my head, the better I, I'd write because it was so much, it felt easier. That, that TV, that show I was watching in my head could be translated much easier there because like now I knew what I was, I was grabbing onto. It was, it was, um, for example, a room full of six pillars, a very open air environment that was over four stories tall. There was turquoise colored banners hanging from these six pillars supporting the room. They were thin but tapered in reverse at the ends where they got thicker and spilled out to the wall or the ceiling itself. The ceiling itself was an intricate weave of glass fixtures that were ribbed, giving it an almost organic shape. You know, just something, something like that, just out of out of out of nowhere something you can formulate yourself now people are contacting me in skype what's going on here okay but that's what's important to me that's what i focus on i like detailing the setting and then delving into characters and how they, they interact or what they say to each other or, or, or just things like that. Speaking quirks are something that I really got into and I, I like having characters that have an, an odd way of speaking and I know it might irritate some people but I will try and write the way they talk because something that's always bothered me is you'll have a character that speaks totally fine. Like all, all the text is spelt fine. Like that, and he'll say, and then at the end he'll say, he said in a totally like that. You you've got someone speaking, and it's a okay. And then you've got the other character, huh? Like, it, it just breaks the mood for me. So, that, it, it's things like that where I can try and convey sound with writing, and I know that's not going to be everybody's cup of tea, and at, at some point it, it's going to get, like, annoying to want to write, like, Like, goofy stuff like that. Sounds like something growling outside my window. Alright. Yeah, we know, Caleb. You are very anime in that sense. You like to keep making snake people hiss like freaking One Piece. I've not seen any One Piece where they're hissing snake people. And for my own satisfaction, I... <laughs> I want to keep that in there because for the Rolfians, that that's how they do. They they have a very guttural sounding language, so it's a lot of guttural sounds in the throat or hissing as a sort of intimidation tactic that they do. And not all my species are going to sound like that. The thing I can't read half of. The thing is, I can't read half of what you write. Well, it, it, it saddens me that the Canadian educational system is that badly broken, but don't worry, Sush, you I will not give up hope on you. Eventually, I'll teach you how to read. <laughs> but, uh... In Japanese, so apparently we are just staring at each other in silence now. No, I, I remember the Hai Ike Masu, or whatever that was. I, I saw you writing there. I'm just focusing... <laughs> On, on trying to give some sort of a point here in the stream and then moving on to some <laughs> actual actual uh, writing. I will eat your Meg. Why eat my Meg when you're the one who's been roasted? Cessera, if you would like some, some fres freshly roasted sush, it is here on the table for you. Meg will supply as many potatoes as you want. 
I will T-pose until I have dominance. And I am so small. Yeah, no, it's going to be like a precision scalpel strike with, with Meg. I'll just throw Meg at you and she'll, like, destabilize your atoms. She'll just annihilate the Higgs boson fields holding them together. E, sush tastes like clams. No, unfortunately, I don't think she does. Actually, after recently, I'm pretty sure she tastes like grapes. <laughs> I hope noi. Oh, just for a little bit of catching the readers up. Meg, can I press you into service for reading today? Because I know we have a tired Cessra, and I figured a little bit of reading might might uh, help ease that a little bit. Oh yeah, no. S uh, Sush contacts me way out of out of the early morning one of these days. I I'm just sitting typing, and Sush comes out of nowhere, and she's just like, Caleb, I'm going to eat these three bags of grapes. Don't try to stop me. I'm like, okay, have a wonderful time. And she's like, why didn't you try to stop me? I am so, so sick right now. So he's new. All right. I probably taste like green apple, actually. You know, I always preferred Granny Smith over, like, the Red Delicious. It's always been me. I, I like the, the different taste of, of the Granny Smith. Yeah, I'd, I'd ask Sush to read, or not Sush, excuse me. Oh, yeah, no, I'd ask Sush to read, but uh, she doesn't really have a mic, I don't believe. And Cesra, I, I would ask to read, but she's been going through quite a rough day and I don't want to put her on the spot and just like, hey! In order to relax uh, Cessra, Cessra, would you please read to Cessra? My entire body is apple scented. Uh, all I can think of is that one song I've heard in like Synthasia or something like that called Bad Apple. And I, I think that's a good song for Sush. So, looks totally like her brain blue screened. <laughs> yeah, no, that was that was some some weird spider logic on on my behalf. So. Sush pulls out apple scented scepter. Oh god. No, you wanna know something I do a lot here? I'm gonna post the link in the chat. But when I I wanna proofread my stuff or I don't wanna like really focus too hard with reading anything and like I wanna divert my attention to other things for preparing for the next stream or something like that. I will go to and this might help you I will go to this website and I will copy and paste how many of those do you have? What, apple scented scepters? Or sushes? Because I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure sush just self replicates in, in, in infinity. But I'll go to uh from text to speech dot com and I'll just plug in what I want it to say and let it play. And I'll go over it like that. Now, granted, there's some alien words that it just, like, totally gives up on. And I'm pretty sure that the more I use it, the more increasingly, like, passive-aggressive it gets. Excuse me. But it is very handy to hear your own work, at least for me, coming back at you. Yes, infinite sush. Thanos tried to get rid of her. It didn't work. As such, I requested my money back. <laughs> Alright, I'll uh, do a little bit of reading if no one minds. <clears throat> Actually, I'll get some water first, instead of all the soda, because I've already gone through that whole cup. How would everybody like that? A little bit of reading? Can we get some hype in the chat for a small a monicum of reading? <laughs> Just... Just the singular. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I 
<laughs> oh, we've got a different... Whoa, and do whoop whoop. Oh god, no. Meg's going into full panic. Oh, we've got a suit or we got a Cessor now. E, we've got excitement. Well, you know, two thirds of the chat agrees. Sush, you gotta be special now and go against the grain. <laughs> Tell me no, I don't want you to read your book, stupid and awful. <sighs> 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 The operator snorted simply as he eyed his machine, paying Maud little attention at her annoyed threat hisses. His claws danced with the effectiveness... <laughs> I am contrarian. I am a contrarian. Yes, you are, Sush. His claws... Please only read in Japanese. <laughs> his gla... Excuse me. His claws danced with the effectiveness one would assume of a man who had trained well enough in his profession to avoid being deemed replaceable. Adjusting the frequency. Good thing I read over that. Adjusting the frequency of the rucksack sized long range broadcaster. A low deep breath would swell the lungs of the operator as he prepared to speak before being cut off by the sudden sharp sounds of small scrambling bodies. <laughs> Caleb, Japanese. Yes. Just a lot of like, oh, ta, 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 Miyagi. Wax on, wax off. That's that's the extent of my Japanese. <laughs> what is what has Sush sent me? You're leaving Picarto. It's encrypted. Okay, an anime character. Cool. Okay. A low, deep breath would swell the lungs of the operator as he prepared to speak. Excuse me. Before being cut off by the sudden sharp sounds of small scrambling bodies, every eye in the group immediately whipped in the direction of the noise made by the approaching palamda and spacers of various species. A potent mixture of disappointment and annoyance would again overtake Maud as the members of her Rolfian kin followed along behind the shambling group. Held at gunpoint and badly worn eonded slaves and their cruel ma excuse me held at the gunpoint of badly worn eonded slaves and their cruel masters, the thirteen kidnapped souls hurried along through the brush and halted before this new group of their captors kind. The eonded spilled out soon excuse me the eonded spilled out soon behind them ushering them forward into a small bundle and would collapse just as suddenly under the shoves of the Rolfians behind them. Retreating, Brock? Maud jeered, her eyes cut through the others. Or, excuse me, Maud jeered as her eyes cut through the others. Unlike her and those who had followed her from the dig site, past the fortress, through the woods, and even the others who were still scattered along with, or excuse me, within the little patch of barely developed land they'd taken. The bulk of the Rolfians which surrounded the newly captured addition to their chattel were significantly better equipped. Whereas Maud and those with her wore only the most spartan of garments in the form of extravagant cloths and clasps, and golden clasps, which draped or coiled around their trunks, with some light afterthought given in the form of loose belts littered with whatever equipment they could take and affix to themselves. The armor-clad follow... The armor-clad followers of Sangna... Excuse me. Sangus Brack would be a stark contrast to their would-be military commander. Were Rolfians to have such uniformity trying to ignore the fact I spit there. Nobody saw a thing. Nobody saw it. Didn't happen. The most striking difference, at a glance, would be the implants and equipment fashioned around the faces of each of the drudges. Cup-like coverings firmly affixed... Excuse me. Cup-like coverings would firmly affix to the blackened head shield, covering the eyes and allowing only one vertical slit in each, sporting only the smallest pinpricks of light from the machinery within. A mouthpiece of some sort would be rooted firmly into their closed maws, strapped deeply in place and housing a plethora of equipment in greater sophistication to the pack the communicator operator hefted. 
Tubes of wildly differing variety would slink this way and that, under, around, and through large slabs of the Rolfian metals which seemed caught between stark black and, in some places, more of the former purple color, creating a, an effect similar to the inside of an oyster shell under the light which managed to creep through the dwindling smoke in the sky and the treetops. And that's where we are right now. Oh, thank you. <laughs> With only 30% stuttering. Cut to the Sully gift from earlier. Mm. That's how you know you're a character in my book, when apostrophe S doesn't make the spell check appear underneath you. Hmm, excuse me. Now, I want to make a quick run to Google real quick to see if hard points is one word or two. Hard points. Yep, nope, one word. You get to add to the diction added to the dictionary. Boop. There you go. Oh, the assessor came back. Glad to see you still here. I'm glad to see that the stream isn't glitching out so bad this time. You know, I, al I always thought that was a noise of excitement. I think what it is is Cessera trying to get better entertainment value out of the stream by summoning Markiplier. We're just summoning E in the chat and hoping it works. 
please, for the love of God, let something entertaining and fun happen. I'm watching a man drink his life away with Coke Zero. Yeah, that that was awful last time. That was, I absolutely hated that. Cesra is secretly Markiplier. <laughs> that would be an interesting combination to want to see. Yeah, there, e. We always knew it, but we didn't want to believe it. I didn't know. I didn't know the powers I was trifling with. No clam. No amount of clams in the world would be enough to, to stop her once she achieved her final form. Ah, but we all know clams are the favorite food of a yinglet. And that is not the button I wanted to be hitting. Mm. Thank you very much. That's just going to be the name of this episode. Episode whatever of Written Wednesday. Mm. Frustrated grunt asterisk. Speaking of being dumb, I sent you a thing on Discord. Play it in the stream. Sure thing. Just just play the music and the monkey does the thing. It happened. Everybody noticed. Oh no. I'm trying to ignore the fact I spit there. Nobody saw a thing. Nobody saw it. Didn't happen. These streams are never going to be the same ever again because now we have Detective Sush on the case documenting everything. Oh, that's why it's so dark in here. I don't have my I don't have my big light on. Can everyone see me all right? I'm not like super washed out. Let me let me open OBS again. Oh, it's not terrible lighting. Okie doke. Because again, I can't be left alone with my own reflection. I'll see it and I'll be like, oh, pretty hair, pretty hair, and let's make a face. <laughs> all right. Nah, you're fine. Oh, well, thank you. I'm fine, am I? <laughs> now I have replacement glucose in my eyebrows. I'm really fine now. Dang, lion's mane. Yes! Yes, please conflate my ego. I need positive reinforcement. Need the top hat. Oh, we need the top hat. The top hat does, does we be needing. Well, I have just so happened on the outside of my door for just such an occasion there you go checkmate Cessra what do you think of that that looks awful but I'm gonna stick to it oh great <laughs> we have we have someone new in in the chat who's just watched a, a violent hairy man run to his front door and grab a top hat but you know what i'm sticking with it hello donovan i am very happy to have you here welcome to the writing the writing hopple i think you need need the irish accent now yes yeah no we we've got markiplier in here not not just <laughs> Do by the morning to your laddies. just uh, sell it Sell it for all it's worth. Sush pulls out the ignored scepter. Uh, all right, let's let's get back and take this away from from crazy town and get back to writing here. Okay, while a bulk of the hoses and flexible piping of the Rolfian dirges would be limited. Yeah, no, I'm I'm shocked Donovan's still here too. Whoever this person is has the patience of a saint or is just deaf, so all my loud grating conversation is just flying right through him. <laughs> He's here. Well, that guy is moving a lot.
Yeah, lols, welcome. Thank you for joining my, my selection of kebablings. Where everybody here apparently has a food associated with them for no apparent reason. So, Donovan, until you introduce yourself into the chat, I'm going to associate you with schnitzel, and that's all there is to it. <laughs> no, no, I see don't leave. I know, I have a terrible meat allergy. We should start a Deadpool for when Donovan... <laughs> oh, come on, now. Oh, rata rata, yes! Oh god, I love Chowder so much. That was a great cartoon. I loved how, like, any time they'd move, the patterns on their clothes would be moving too. I'm pretty sure undersuit is one word if I didn't just make the word up myself. Undersuit. For cosplay. Yep, there it is. It's one word. Sc Excuse me. Screw you, spell check. It's a thing. And my chair is sinking again. Yep, Donovan left. <laughs> I'm sorry, Donovan. Thank you for coming, though. I appreciate it, whoever you are. If you stumble across this YouTube video, thank you. I remember you. Yeah, bye, Felicia. take off the hat now. Cesar, I, I hope I hope it was everything you hoped for. We're gonna just throw that off there. The hat is done. It's it's lived its course. It, it needs to go off and and ha find find a, a nice girl hat and ha have a couple of mittens. The fact nobody is talking about Donovan. No, Donovan just got Thanosed. He's gone. We're over it. Yes, yes, you looked so handsome. I know. Where did it all go so wrong? Perhaps mercy. I was. I felt like I was transported back to the old times. Yes, that's. That's that's a good analogy for being anywhere around me. 
Everything smelt of must and mildew. It reminded me of Grandpapa's basement. <laughs> Not the basement! Okay. Oh, Meg, we're, we're going to have to get some therapy here. I, I'm sensing some, some lingering trauma. New game. How many times is Caleb going to rewrite a sentence? you had to choose between being stuck in a bunker or in a tower, which would you pick? Oh, boy, I've... A tower? Because the tower could have a basement and effectively we'd have the best of both worlds. We'd have a bunker and a tower and I could see the sun and I wouldn't go crazy from like losing my sense of night and days and just be like this crazy, decrepit hermit. I would pick Bunker, so I wouldn't be stuck with you in a tower. <laughs> Why, thanks, Sush. You always know, always know what to say to get me right there. Right in the man breast. It's for your own good, Aleb. Indeed it is. Aleb, who this? Who this? He's like the great value version of me. Instead of a suit, it's just like a t-shirt with lapels drawn on it. Ooh! Ooh, that's clever. I like that. I have, like, no meat on me, and I turn to cannibalism faster than a scorpion in a poison jar. Sush. Not bad. Death. Clip. Okay. Ick. Shick. I think that's how I say it. Can we... Um, look up generically no genetically I don't want you looking up there so you're the low budget Fonzie what is Caleb the low 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 budget like the South Korean knockoff Fonzie Copy. 
I could take a clip of you saying, I have no meat on me, and send it to Gitch with no context. Yeah, no, and she'd probably agree with it because she's as big around as this pencil. Control F. Do me a find. Control V. Okay, how do I... Stab it! Giant. On, 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 oh, oh no. Oh, okay. Oh, ha 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 Okay, it kind of sounds like Ted Wasama's on there, but. Guy, okay. Two Ks. Got a third one, and I'd be in hot water. Uh, Gaia, ick. Now I want to hear you like South <laughs> South Korean blow bunch of fancy. No, because then my internet connection would just like disappear entirely. But no, as far as the South Koreans go, Gundam style all the way, baby. Oh God, I don't know. I I I I've never said this story anywhere. I don't believe. But my dad has like this habit of going from pure stoicism to like a cartoon character in like no time at all. And I remember I was working on my novel, and I was talking to him about, like, a paradox I had run across, or some something I was, like, I was stuck with. And I could tell Dad was, like, having a laugh, because he never, he never looks at me with that, that serious. I could, I could tell he was leading me on, like, okay, what's he going to be saying here? And a man who is 62 years old! Just yells, Gundam style! Puts his hands on his hips and does like the flappy leg thing out of the room. And I swear he did the dance better than me. And I, I, I was like 24 at the time. I'm 27 now. It is concerning. But it was also uh, incredible. And I will probably hold like... On his epitaph, I'm just going to have it somewhere where it just says, Richard Arntz, Gundam style. Me when Caleb is hurt by my comments. Me when Caleb ignores me as to not be hurt by my comments. Alright. Uh. Good morning, and she's stamping in the rain. If there's sound, let me know because I don't have my headphones in anymore. Let me see this. Pay attention to me, or I will bite you! Yeah, that's that's pretty much sush. That's that's pretty much what what you what you what you ask for is what you get. Me and Caleb when we hang out. All right, let's see it. <laughs> okay, I want to imagine Sush is the cat there, which is like, oh god, someone please get this hairy tub off of me. Speaking of which, I need to use the bathroom. I'll be right back.
With lightning speed, I have returned. Not sure, not sure which one is which. I'm pretty sure that Sush is the cat. The Sush just looks wholly indifferent to the world around it and is just hoping that things stop. And hey, would you look at that? We got to a new page. Yay. Caleb sounds like me when I play Project Zomboid. Finally, I got to a new page. No, I'm pretty more. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I just sound like Sush whenever she's in my streams. Finally, he got to a new page. Okay, let me just check my notes. By the way, the design for the Rolfians here I have is is really, really, really old. I need to re-update this drawing and I'll probably upload it. Okay, this is not the best lighting to be reading. I literally don't know what a page is. Uh, pretty much the thing in the box there. I stopped trying to read your book after the second stream. Now I'm just being a pest in the chat. And we love you for it. Okay, there. I'm bugging you, but I'm. <laughs> little do we know that that innocent joke actually means that Sue sneaks into my house at night and puts like little radio transceivers around the house. I'm bugging you. Get it? Because you're under surveillance. The joke's on you. I'm exceptionally boring. Fun fact, when you have a song stuck in your head, in French we call that an earworm. Huh. That's unique. I drew up. And again, MS Paint, I, I have like my little my little maps and stuff I, I draw up to wanna keep track of everything. 
Oh, the secret hidden leaf technique. Oh, boy. The secret hidden leaf technique for success. I, I've got to hear this. Hidden leaf never really made much sense to me, just hearing it. Because if you hide a plant away from sunlight and it's not inadequate amounts of sunlight, it's just going to die. It's not going to be the hidden leaf. It's just going to be the withered leaf village. I know, but I probably forgot about it, and I don't want to steal your thunder anyway. You go ahead and tell about this. This is the Sush moment. I just wish Donovan, Donovan would have been here to see it. It's the hidden leaf village. I, I get you. The Leaf Village, which is hidden. Oh, another great writer I want to give a shout out to, who's actually here in the chat, is Cesra. Because... Like, I've, I've, I've told my friend uh, Jacob about her idea for, like, the backstory of her character. How she can sort of, like, transition between characters when she wants to through, like, this liberal space of, like, semi-lucid dreaming leading her into a different reality. And it is absolutely fantastic. And he agreed. I thought you were going to talk about me. Yeah, no, fair enough. Oh, God, no. Sush came up with the ultimate way for writing, like, the quintessential human mythology of the 21st century. And it is absolutely amazing what Sush did. You didn't say Sush had a great idea last stream yet. Well, I, I think another one you're going to talk about, but Sush knows the sush finally you remember yeah no i remember this and i was telling people about in at work about this this is absolutely amazing where she goes to online forums where they conduct raids against other websites and like just just your average you know trolling kind of forms and she takes all the stories all the green texts and switches admin and stuff like that to god excuse me and retells these stories in like a greek mythology set a sense and some of them are actually better than classic Greek mythology because the level of detail that goes into them and like the extent of the rise the fall the tragedy the redemption it <laughs> it's amazing these are the quintessential human stories of the 21st century if you want 
modern human mythology. Go to Sush. She's figured out the formula. It's a mutation of the G.R.R. Martin method, but instead of using history, you use form drama, and it works surprisingly well. I need to read one of those. Here, let me get... Like, this isn't going to help you at all. At all. But let me get you my favorite green text story. Here, I'll put in my headphones. We will We will listen... No, it's got swears in it. Never mind. We won't listen to it. But I will pass it on to everybody so that you can enjoy it later at, at your own. Now, I will warn you, I do have a toilet sense of humor. Apparently, at some point in my development, my humor never stopped being seven. So, so, so be ready for that. Yeah, just pause here. Let me... Copy the copy the link, and I'm gonna to listen to this after the stream. You you think I'm joking, but no. Oh, the Sith Jan the Sith janitor was great. Right, let me see. Is that is that the right one? Is that the right one? Let me let me see here. Ooh, I think my air conditioner broke. That's fun. Okay, yeah, Anon tries fiber. Ugh. No, no, Sush didn't write this one. This is just a form story I've known about that I like listening to and watching because it's absolutely hilarious. All right, let me see. Oh, God, this is going to be fun doing streams in the future if my if my AC's broke because it is like the... The, the onset uh, of the heat of summer in Florida, it's been 100 degrees for the past two days straight, so uh, that's going to be fun. Hey, refresh my memory. What is 2B, 2T again? I know I know what it is. I know you've explained what it is before, but it's just like right out of my head. Oh, okay, yeah, no, I had no idea what that was then.
<laughs> a spy novel about Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> I'll give that one a read. It turns out the flag he's been hiding actually has like detailed information hidden in its fabrics and, and the people chasing after it are actually counterintelligence operatives trying to get it back. God, that was the greatest game of Capture the Flag ever to grace this planet. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Um, I, I've heard a couple of Shia LaBeouf songs. I, uh, are you talking about the one Watch Frogs? Watch frogs, watch frogs, keeping shy on his toes, no matter where the flag will go. Oh, 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 oh. Ah, uh, God. Uh, let's see. Their operations, but had a channel only for fake news. Ooh, clever.
Alright, let's take a look. Oh, I'm gonna need my headphones for this. 4 Caleb. Let's have a look. Okay, who's who's sending me stuff in Discord? Oh! Oh, that one! Yes! Yes, I've seen that one. I've seen that one. Stop being productive and pay attention to it. Oh, I know. I'm terrible. <sighs> well, I think I'm going to end the stream here. Because it's not every day I have horseradish and my body is full of pain and regret. So I will see you next Wednesday if I still have a skeleton. Thank you all very much for coming. It's always a deep rewarding experience for me to hang out with my friends once a week and just work on this with me because I, I really value your feedback on this and if and when I can help with your creative goals, your creative product or projects, your writing, your art, whatever it is, any way I can support you guys, I really appreciate being there. And it's not just Wednesday. You guys, like, whenever you need help, you know I'm always on Discord or Skype, and it's it, it's cool just to know that in some way, some dopey, hairy guy managed to help you get a little bit farther in the picture you wanted to draw or the story you wanted to draw. So I, I thank you very much for opening up your heart and letting me be a part of it. And I hope that at least in some way, the, these streams are equally entertaining. So, thank you all. Yes, hug Zikayla very tight. Come on in. Bring it in. Bring it in. Love me. I'll never bother you all week. <laughs> well, I, thank you all, and I, I do appreciate it. So, I hope the beginning of this was helpful to anyone. Uh, I, I'm, I'm glad that uh, you stuck with it as long as you did, and hopefully that... Uh, the fact you did is is evidence that these are entertaining videos and I, I, I should keep uploading and keep doing what I'm doing. So I will see you guys next week. And who knows, I might hit my swing and I might uh, start uploading more videos to the channel outside of Written Wednesday. We'll see. We'll see what ambition survives and uh, if this air conditioner sorts itself out because I might be dead. Catch you guys later. As always, thank you very much for being here with me. And I will see you on the next Written Wednesday. Bye. Click the button. And now we click the other button. This is the secret YouTube cut back.